Imagine a year where the winner of the Academy Award for Best Actor goes to a white guy doing a vaguely European accent. Oh yeah! What year is that one, mister? <laughs> what the year is 1937? Hello and welcome to Oldie Butter Goodie. Oh, it's nice to be out out here in the oh in like nature. Oh, after the last few weeks. Oh, it's great. Anyway, my name is Sandro. I'm traveling through time due to a time travel mishap, and I'm currently in the year 1937. Gonna review a movie very soon called Captain's Courageous, but first I've gotta find uh, my co-host in the body of one of these random NPC, I mean one of these random humans, historical people, walking around this, uh, this nice little township. I'm just gonna walk down this dirt road and uh, not put in the sound effects of me walking because that's too much effort, but um, this part- oh, oh, oh my god, there's a car. That's a very fancy car, I must be compensating for something. <laughs> oh, there's, there's a whole bunch of them. Is this, a, is this like a race? Am I in the middle of a racing track? Nine, combat. <laughs> These are just my security. Security? You got cars as your security? Nine is the people in the cars that are my security. Oh, that makes sense. They, they, they could be overprotective of me as, uh, you know, the president. It is interesting to meet an Englishman in such parts. Well, I'm from Australia, but I guess you can say I'm an Englishman. Yeah, um, what, uh, what, 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 what? Uh, who are you? Ah, uh, why, I am the president of Germany. The president of Ger- Oh, no. Paul fun. Ludwig Hans Anton von Beckendorf on von Hindenburg. At your service. Oh, no. <laughs> and I am here visiting this lovely countryside to tell people about the great Hindenburg. Which in about two weeks or so will be taking flight. Oh no! <laughs> this doesn't feel like something we should be making fun of. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> ah, yes, the Hindenburg. It really is the next Titanic, isn't it? Oh, uh, I don't know what that is, but I'm sure it means marvelous. Ah, uh, my fine good friend who I appointed as Council of Germany, Hitler, will be joining me to, to visit it. Oh no, you're friends with Hitler? Yes, all big friends. Like, I'm one of the key reasons that he is in his position of power at the current time. I know. I'm very aware. I'm ve Oh, and I can't punch you because of all, this, all the security that's running around. Yes, we have lots of security just in case anybody wants to punch me. Everybody's mad after World War I and how, you know, I was in charge at that time. I don't know how to make fun of this, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say <laughs> that, hey, you're a bit of a fuckhead, actually. I kind of hate Whoa! you. Oh, how dare you, sir? How dare you? Ah, you will be eating your words once the Hindenburg takes flight. Yeah? And, uh, you know, I look fucking awesome and all that shit. More like, uh, you're gonna be eating your... your face. Oh! <laughs> ah, that's it! I'm going to punch you! Oh, no, no! Because you might not be able to punch me <laughs> because of all my security and my, uh, bulk and fantastic mustache. But I can punch you! You know what, I will say, despite you being a terrible person who contributed a lot to a terrible a decade of war and death Yes and just atrocious war crimes, you do have a very nice muster. <laughs> ah, thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, of course, of course. Anyway, time to put oh, I'm actually kinda glad it's gross. It looks gross, but I'm glad that, that guy's gone. Whoa! Hey! Hello. I have a great mustache on. You do. You also uh, kind of appointed Hitler as Chancellor of Germany. Oh no! <laughs> what have I done? Yeah. Wow, there's a lot of concerned security guards around here. <laughs> right. Do you want to go break into another random house for a second? Yeah, let's go record at a house. I don't want to be around these security guards. Alright, security, just wait here for two seconds. 
Wait, hang on a second. This guy who you were, he died in 1934. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the time's fucked up. Oh, no. Hey, hey, maybe time, maybe time's fucked up, you know? Hmm. I sure hope that doesn't forebode for later episodes terrible things to come. I think we'll forget. Honestly, I don't think that's going to come back. I think we'll just forget. That's fair. Uh, much like how we've almost forgotten that this week we're reviewing Captain's Courageous. Whoa! Speaking of, speaking of ships rather than an airship, a zeppelin, if you will, we're going to a sea ship. A, a ship, if you will. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think we get the idea. It's a, it's a ship. We're going on a ship. And this is a movie that I saw when I was very young, and I've got stories about it, and I remembered it very well, and th- this was nostalgic, even though there's parts of this movie that are not very good. What did you think of Captain's Courageous, though, Zach? First impressions? I, I thought it was quite good. Yeah. It was, it was a cute movie. This was great. What do you mean there was places where this was bad? What do you mean there was racism in the 30s? What do you mean, <laughs> Sandro? I don't what understand. Do, what do you mean this movie has only one black that character and he's the chef and it's fucked yeah. what do you mean there's a white guy doing a Portuguese accent the entire time and it's awful <laughs> no apart from yeah the obvious problems I thought the actual story was pretty good like it it, it, it it's very you know it, it, heartfelt sort of like I don't, I don't want to say common story but like it's got a, a good sort of trope thing where you get like a bratty kid mm-hmm. who's been spoiled Because he's never been, you know, he's never had to work for anything. Yeah, exactly. And then you put him in a situation where not only he kind of has to work, but he wants to work. And so then because he wants to do that, he has to learn to toughen up a bit and become a a, a better kid. And then the movie ends and nothing bad happens. And I didn't cry (laughs) because that would be lame. Definitely a tearjerker, and they are my weakness. They are my Achilles heel. They are indeed. And I get annoyed every time. I know, I think it's a really good coming of age story. Bratty mm. kid gets... That's that's the word, coming of age. That's the one I was looking for. Yeah. Well, com- com- coming of age, but also not just coming of age, because he's also learning life lessons and stuff. And Yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's less coming of age, it's coming of growing up as a person. Yeah, Not yeah. just physically, but mentally. That's yeah. right. And also, a good, uh, it's a good father and son sort of movie. You watch this with your dad, you'll be like, Dad, this is a uh, father and son film. I don't know. Yep. That's, uh, I don't like saying that, because it's very gendered. But anyway... <laughs> If you don't take me sailing, I'm going to go away with a stranger with a bandolier. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, Sandro, what about you? I've talked about this. This was my first viewing and I thought this this movie still holds up. This movie's still still a good movie. It was a nice coming of age story. Pretty great. I enjoyed it. Sandro, you've watched this before. Yeah. You have stories. You have things. Tell me. Open your mouth hole and speaketh the words that will inform me. Uh, so yeah, I've seen this before. I think I must have been around the same age as the main character. So probably like 10 to 12. Ah. Saw this with my dad one evening. I think it must have been on VHS. I can't remember. And you could even relate the, the super hard because your dad's also a business tycoon. No. That owns planes and yachts that's, and other things. Uh, that's and never very spend any. true. I am a Nepo <laughs> baby. I'm a podcast Nepo <laughs> baby. My dad is John Howard. Not true. Um, <laughs> I, I don't remember if I've ever heard the term Nepo baby, but I want to bring it back. <laughs> Nepo baby? That's a huge thing. I think it's more of a TikTok thing, though. Like, it got popular on TikTok, so that's where I got oh, it from. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. If you're, like, a nepotism kid, then, yeah, it's like... Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, as a rich kid. Yeah, Nepo baby. I get you. But, yeah, I remember watching this, and I remember being like, this is really cool. I think this might have even sparked why I like movies of, like, a young kid slash teen on a ship and is doing work, like Hornblower and shit. Mm. I love that stuff so much. That's why I relate to Will Wheaton in Next Gen. Not true. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Shut up, Wesley. I don't know. I just remember really, really enjoying it. But um, the first time I saw it, you know, there's a scene in this movie that's very dramatic. It's near the end of the film. It's very dramatic. It's very loud. There's a lot of waves crashing and, like, loud sound effects and stuff. And during that sequence, one of our neighbours accidentally threw a baseball through our back door window. What? Which is where we were watching the film. And just that, that has always made me remember this movie. Because it was a big 
jump. I remember jumping and my dad also did a bit of a jump and then a, oh, I'm a man afterwards because of course you can't jump if you're a man. Of course. And, um, no, he was he was m- merely being alert to protect his child, you know. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, no, I remember that. And I remember uh, because of that, I remember this movie. And so when I saw it, I was like, hell yeah, I've always wanted to rewatch this. So let's do it. So did any baseballs fly through your window during this watching? Nope. <laughs> ah, disappointing, disappointing. I should have come over and just piffed a baseball <laughs> through your window. I'm sure, if you're able to pay the <laughs> repair fee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that That's the... Oh, I wouldn't tell you. I would run away. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you're never knowing. Which is... Play- I mean, to be fair, where I live makes sense. Could have just been a random person. It's fine. I enjoyed this the second time. Yes, it's a little bit racist. Yes... That guy's accent is terrible. I mean, you know, he's doing Portuguese. It's kind of like a Spanish-ish accent. It's fine. It's not racist, but it is, like, bad. Yeah, it wasn't good. It was just trying to have an accent. But the the actual character itself was pretty good. Oh, for sure. And I thought the actor was pretty good. I liked the young kid. He sounded like a British, like, housewife from the 50s at points. He was very (laughs) well... Like, he talked very proper. He was like, what?! And stuff like that whenever he was talking. Well, I mean, that makes sense, right? Because he's meant to be a rich, snooty kid, right? So he's, he's got to talk a bit proper. So I thought, I thought that makes sense. But yeah, no, it's a good performance. Yeah, actually, I will say, I think the kid, for a snooty kid, mm. honestly, he could have been more annoying. Oh. I, find, I found him less annoying than most annoying kids. And that, that's, uh, that surprised me. No, he's really good in this. He is really good as this kid. You really care about him, I think. Mm. You kind of hate him at the start, and then you're like, well, oh, I mean, like, you hate him, but you're, like, also, like, kind of the dad's fault a little bit as well. Like, it's not all on the kid. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that's the thing, right? A lot of these kids, these um, Nepo babies, <laughs> you know... It's 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 how they were how they were raised, you know. Like they 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 are just trying to uh, copy their parents, and what they see their parents do is business, and like you know manipulation and other things to get money, and so that's how they grow up is just like these things because of the lack of parenting, and it's a bit it's a bit sort of sad yeah. because then they'll grow up to be bad parents, right? And it's sort of a, a never-ending cycle of this thing, because that's how their parents did it. They focused on the money, and they didn't focus on family, and so when they grow up, that's how they, they treat their family. You know, you teach them how to do business, and then you leave them alone, you know? And I'm, I think that's a pretty good part of the film, is that, yeah, it's not only the coming of age of the kid, but also the dad as well. It's a good kind of uh, single father kind of story there. I quite liked it. Um so Manuel, which is the guy that he befriends on the ship, played by Spencer Tracy, award-winning actor at the time. He was, like, doing heaps and heaps of stuff and winning all the awards. His accent is bad. It's a bad accent, but it's a great performance and character. Yeah, yeah. Now that I think about it, it was a bad accent. But at every time he was on screen, I was just in- enthralled by him. Yeah. And his, and his antics, and he's... Good writing, obviously very good writing um, for his character, but still, he he owned it very well. Mm. And this sort of, like, strange, optimistic character who's singing songs and telling tales, constantly telling different stories, and you Constantly don't... threatening to break a kid's neck. Yeah, 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 but... It... <laughs> break your neck! <laughs> but in a loving way, he'll break his neck, you know? <laughs> but that's the whole thing, like, he's only... He's... You you can tell, and this is the bit where he's like sort of uh, turned to the kid's side, and he's like saying, "Oh, I'll break this kid's neck," because he's trying to hide the fact that he really cares about this kid. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to be the tough man, and that's great. I love I love the like fake tough man act he puts on, which is pretty great. Um, other good performances here from Lionel Barrymore as the captain playing the captain's son. You might have noticed it's Mickey Rooney, who was Jim Hawkins in Treasure. Island, same guy, he's back. Oh! The same director. I didn't notice that at all. That's very interesting. I like how, yeah, he had sort of a minor role here. But yeah. no, I, I didn't notice that at all. 
he only has a couple of scenes, but I thought he was good. No, he's quite good. Um, and also playing Long Jack, who is the guy who gets some fishing hooks in his arm. It's a whole thing. We'll get to it in spoilers. Uh, he's played by John Carradine, who went on to be Dracula in the later Dracula films in the 40s. Ah, uh, yeah, he, he's a, definitely more of a gaunt, taller figure. So I could see him playing that well, but he was also good. I liked him as one of the sort of like named sailors, you know. He didn't have a big role in the movie, but the parts he played, he was good. Uh, you know, he was the um, antagonist for a bit. Yeah, he was. He was really good. We have seen him in a film before. He was the supreme commander in the Ice Pirates. <gasps> no. The old guy who was in the bed. <laughs> That's him. No! Shut up! And he's the dad of David Carradine, who was the lead character in The Warrior and the Sorceress. <laughs> no! Shut up! That terrible film we reviewed. <laughs> Holy crap, no way! As soon as I saw him, I was like, this looks like David Carradine. There's no way this is his dad. And I was like, <laughs> there we go. All the way back to the 30s. Whoa! All comes full circle. That's crazy! Yeah. Everything's connected, timey-wimey. Hindenburg still alive. Oh yeah, and it's based off of a book from Rubyard Kipling, who did uh, the Jungle Book, mm. uh, the same author as the Jungle Book. A um, lot of differences between the, the book and the movie. In the book, uh, the dad is a railroad magnate, so he's not a tycoon. He just owns a lot of like railroads and stuff. Um, in the book, I don't think the ending is as sad as it is in the movie. Oh really? Yeah. You stupid movie producers, you! Ah! Um, some other stuff where I wanted to sort of talk about in non-spoilers was how this film is shot as well, because there's some amazing stuff here with the sequences on the sea, because it's kind of obvious when you think about it that it's like a ship on a set with like a pool underneath it for the water, and then kind of like a projection up the back for like the ocean and other the ships and stuff. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. seamless. In this, you kind of can't tell. It's amazing. Yeah, they've done really well with the sort of like B roll shots of like ships and stuff going by and syncing that up with studio like movement of the ships and other things. I think they did really well. Yeah. Nowadays, if they had done that, I would have believed they were just out on the ocean filming them. But they, of course, they did it in a studio, and that's that's even more impressive. So it was it's very well shot. Yeah, and apparently as well, it's very accurate to actual fishing. And yeah, some people who are training to be fishermen watch this movie to see how the people do it, which is you know cool, good. I like that. I like that stuff in movies. I mean, it, it makes sense. It it showed. A lot of the story involved fishing, so it made sense that they, you know, would be pretty accurate. Um, yeah, because you said there was a book about this movie and there's a different ending, right? So it means probably that the book was written by someone quite familiar with sailing and fishing. I mean, maybe. I don't really know, because I've read Jungle Book. I haven't read any of his other works, so I don't really know how in-depth this would go about fishing. Well, it's possible he just talked to sailors or the producers did, you know. It, it, it feels very authentic. It does, it does. But also, like, that's the sort of thing, like, in the books. If a book goes really in-depth about sailing, I kind of don't care. I'd probably just, like, zone out for that section of the book. But in a movie... Oh, well, it depends how it's written. Yeah, because it could just be, like, the whole, like... The kid goes to port when he should be at starboard. Yeah, and, yeah. Star and then he and, and it's like, oh, and the guy's like, oh no, or it doesn't even say that. It's just like, oh yeah, no, that's port, that's starboard. You know, that's the only mention of that. And like when they're fishing, it just says the description of what actually happens rather than it's like teaching you to fish. You know, I remember there was a Stephen King short story once about like a cursed baseball glove or something. It was like a short story. I read it, and he goes so in-depth about how to play baseball that I'm like, this is boring. I don't care about this story at all, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I'm going through some trivia here. Apparently, oh my god, everything's connected. Chris Elliott has stated that this movie was the inspiration for his film Cabin Boy, which was the first movie we ever did on the podcast. What? What? Crazy. Shut up. I don't know how authentic that is because it's on IMDb trivia, but... um. Yeah, <laughs> it's there. 
Oh, nothing on IMD <laughs> trivia is true. It's all false. But that's crazy. This this movie was more tied to our podcast than I thought. Uh, apparently, Spencer Tracy said that he never felt like he actually was believable in the role. <laughs> Fair enough. Accent was kind of bad. He was a good actor. And yet, in the novel, the kid is 15, whereas he, they were changed it to 10 for the um, the movie. Yeah, he did seem a bit younger. I like that. I think it works with him being younger. If he was like a teenager, I think he could have just been annoying and unlikable. Yeah, potentially. But I'd like, that's the, the whole point of his character is, is at first he's annoying and unlikable. Yeah. And then becomes a better person. And you could sort of see that. Uh, I, I think it wouldn't have made too much of a difference, but they probably just changed it so they could meet the age of the actor yeah. that was playing the role. Like, they just liked this actor better, so they went with a younger actor. Ah, oh, and this was the first movie that MGM ever sold to TV. Ah, oh, well, yeah. there you go. How about that? TV movie, yeah. I mean, it does feel like the sort of movie you'd see on TV, like, mid-afternoon, you're at the hospital kind of vibe, and this comes on. Oh, wow, movie. wow, that is a vibe. Yeah, no, I kind of got that. Yeah. I kind of got that, you know? I can almost smell the hospital, you know? Oh, no. What does it smell like? Well, it's like, it's a nice clean smell, but there's like, there's that hint of the smell of whatever cleaning products they use. Oh, yeah. Because it just permeates the hospital and you can't get rid of that smell. But there's like an underlying smell of you don't know what. And that's just the smell of the hospital is you're lying in bed, you got your tray of like mushy food. Yep, that's right. You peel open one little carton of jam and you peel open carton of uh, spreadable uh, non-butter material and like one piece of bread and like a plastic knife to, to spread it with. Yeah. You got your carton of juice and you're watching this movie. Well, I was going to give this movie an oldie, but you just painted that scene so well that, uh, yeah, no, I really get this movie now, actually. Um, yeah, if you're if you're ever in hospital <laughs> and uh, about to sit down, watch a, watch a movie on the TV or lie down, uh, request this movie. Yeah, look, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It is all the boys all the time. It's a very man-centric film. It's quite aged that, you know, in that way. I mean, it made sense, at least on the shipping like the sailors, like there weren't many female sailors back then, but you could have had, you know, female teachers, female business people. The kid could have been even a girl. The kid could, which maybe for our remake, we'll discuss it later. What? Shut up. No way. PC gone mad? You you refuse to do it? <laughs> uh, that, no, that's not what I said. Oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm giving this a goodie. I think it's really good. I don't think it's as good as, like, Captain Blood, but I, uh, out of all of the ship movies we've seen, this is an another really good one. Further cementing my fact that movies on a ship are great. I love movies on a ship. Put, mm, give me more movies yes. on a ship. <laughs> yeah, we, we've had a lot of ship movies. But, yes, this is a bit more of a light-hearted, chiller film. There's there's no fighting. There's no big, you know, combat action scenes. No, th there's a bit of action with the race. Like, the race at the end's a bit of action, yeah, actually. Yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not like combat, you know. People aren't, you know, getting shot with pistols and cannon fire. Like, this isn't your piratey adventure Yarr. sea film. That's no, right. This is a, this is a, a slice-of-life sort of film. My favourite anime subgenre. Yes, a slice of... This, this has got to be one of my top anime films from 1937. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's the same year that Snow White came out, so... <laughs> absolutely. I think uh, this is a better um, seafaring film than Snow White. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. I I agree <laughs> with that statement. See, there you go. There you go. You can't disagree. So I'm going to also give it a goodie. Excellent. Two goodies for Captain's Courageous. Is the title good? Captain Courageous? Captain's Courageous. Captain's Cre- yeah. It's multiple it, captains and they're courageous. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It might have- Is the book called that? Yep. Yeah, because it might have made more sense in the book. 
you know, maybe he called her him, you know, he may always oh, going to be a courageous captain one day, you know, something like that. I don't know. But yes, it doesn't make much sense in the movie, but it's a title. It's whatever. Yeah, it's fine. It's whatever. But you could have called it, I don't know, The Adventures of the Little Fish or something. I don't know. Oh, call it Little Fish. Yeah, Little Fish, right? I like that. Rich, annoying, piece of shit, little fish becomes greater fish. Richie Rich, but he's a fish. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Howdy, it's me, Sally McSeller, and oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, is it is it time for an ad? Wow, Sandra and Zag, they've been cooking things up in the kitchen, and I'm not talking about meatloaf. I'm talking about a new Patreon episode on Friday the 13th, part four, the final chapter. It's out right now on Patreon. You can get it for five US dollars a month and other bonus episodes. Here's a clip. Uh, I quite like this review from Liz, who says, low key favorite thing about this film, the fact that it takes place immediately after parts two and three. So that means it's Monday the 16th. <laughs> Yeah, it's not even Friday the 13th. <laughs> That's such a good review. It's a good, it's great. It's oh, that's great a banger review. of a view. Well done. Okay, yep, that's it. I'm skipping dinner. I ain't paying for dinner. I only got enough money for dinner or Patreon. And I'm picking Patreon because the boys don't pay me. I'm going to patreon.com forward slash oldie buddy goodie pod and getting that bonus episode right now. Woohoo, I'm an American. I, I, I also need food. Don't be like me. If you don't have money, don't get the episode. All right, let's get into some spoilers. I mean, we could go through the plot of the movie, but also, I don't know, I, I, there's not a whole lot to really say about the plot of the movie. It opens and you're like, oh, he's a rich kid. He's like, I want my breakfast in my bedroom. And the server's like, well, it wants its breakfast in its room. And I'm like, cool, they're calling the kid an it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Yeah. I will say the editing of this movie is not very good. Yeah. Oh! Well, like, at first, maybe. Like, like at the start, for sure, yeah. Yeah, 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 because we still have the uh, the ship scenes to go, and I think the editing's quite good when they're on the ships. True. I think it's because they're trying to establish... That, like, there's a lot of plot up top about him blackmailing kids and stuff. Yeah. And they try to move through it really quickly, so the editing just feels a bit, like, it's quite messy. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's fair, and I feel like, you know, that's just a product of its time. Uh, all editors sucked back then. All of them. Every single one. <laughs> well, I mean, because the way that they edited then as well was, like, not on a computer. I know, wild, right? 1937, no computers? What? <laughs> Crazy. How did they survive? How did they do it? How did they go on Twitter and complain about things? Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, th- th- yeah, I can forgive the editing. They They obviously paint the child as, like... Not great. The servants don't like him because he's a little spoiled brat. We got some good quotes as well. Oh, we get the first G whiz we've ever heard on the podcast. <laughs> G whiz. That was pretty funny. You're having breakfast in bed. Oh, G whiz. And oh, and I liked as well how like he tries to blackmail a kid, and then like his reasoning is, well, people give gifts after they do something nice. Why not give a gift before they do something nice? Yeah. Oh, this kid's a real whore. He's going to get far in the business world, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Someone's going to be a lawyer when they grow up, apparently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a bribe. It was a preemptive gift. <laughs> it's a preemptive gift, exactly. Yeah. Which is why, like, at the end of the movie, I'm like, yes, he's learned a lesson, but I also feel like this kid's still going to grow up to be Trump. Whoa. Like, he's still going to grow up to be a bad kid. Oh, uh, I disagree. I disagree. He's still going to grow up to be a businessman. Yeah. But, like, he's definitely going to go, like, on his off time, on his holidays, he's going to go, you know, fishing, right? So he's going to be, like, James Cameron or, like, a Richard Branson type more, like, actually. Yes. I feel like he's still going to be a bad person. Like, ethically, he's still going to be pretty bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but he's not going to be, like, a Trump bad, I feel. Like, are you saying that Trump went on a magical adventure where he was tossed in with regular human beings and came out the way he is now today? That that man interacted with regular humans in his life? 
I mean, I feel like Trump has always lived in a bubble and his dad was rich. Exactly. Just like th th this dad is giving the kid b a bunch of money. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but the whole point of this adventure is he gets like to view outside the bubble. And if he goes out and does the fishing as a regular thing, you know, he's going to regularly pop outside the bubble. So mm. he's going to act a bit more human than most corporate businessmen. I still think he's taking over father's business. Oh, 100%. I still think he's wheeling and dealing. Yeah. But also he's going to be like more human than most businessmen. You know what? Maybe potentially it's his son after that, which becomes the Trump. You think the son after that's the Trump? Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Or the, or the son after that son. Yeah. Somewhere somewhere along that line. All like, I know is that I feel like this kid's gonna start like what's it called from Forrest Gump? The um the shrimp business, like the seafood business. Oh, he's yeah, gonna start yeah, something yeah. like that, I think. He's gonna, you know, he's gonna start something like that. What's gonna happen is he's gonna be like uh, it's either his son yeah. or his grandson. He's gonna try and get him into fishing, and that kid's not gonna like fishing. Mm. And that kid goes, eh, whatever. Granddad's full of shit. I'm gonna go to school and bribe all my classmates. I'm gonna become fucking president of the United States. <gasps> Fuck you. That could be our movie. Our remake is like two generations oh, no. later. It happens again. Captains Courageous 2. More captains in there, even more. Two captains, two courageous. Oh. So what happens? The kid, um, some bad stuff happens at school. His dad's like, all right, I need to like actually give you attention and show you like how to do stuff. He's got three months off. He's got the autumn off or something. Yeah. He he tries to bribe his teacher. Yeah. He's bribing students so they'll let him into the like the exclusive club or something. Um, and then one of them punches him in the face. Oh, and he tries to lie about it. He's like, oh, yeah, I got in a big fight. They locked me up in a dungeon. I had to escape. I love that line. It was great. Yeah, as soon as he was saying, like, oh, I got locked into a dungeon, I'm like, ah, uh, jigs up, kid. Yeah. There's no way that the teachers are getting away with having a dungeon locking kids up. So, yeah, the dad talks with the teachers, and he's like, oh, shit, I fucked up with my parenting. And I mean, to be fair, like, for the dad, he is like, okay, no, I do actually have to do something here. He's not like, eh, not my problem, I'll let someone else handle it. He's like, I'm gonna try. Granted, he then takes the kid on a cruise or something and then ignores the kid. Like, he's not great. No, no, he's definitely not a great dad, but I don't think he's a good dad like a bad person no definitely not as we then see at the end of the movie yeah he he's he's like a businessman who lost his wife anyway his dad's like uh kind of fucked up yeah look uh I w uh i'm not gonna lie probably haven't spent as much time as i should let's uh let's go on cruise let's go somewhere let's hang out kid and I want to know how this scene plays out in the book, because in the movie, what happens is he then like comes across some other kids. He's like, all right, kids, let's go to the bar. Let's get a couple of milkshakes. Yeah, I'll treat you my shout. Let's go get some milkshakes at the bar. And they go to the bar and um, the kid is basically like uh, they finish their milkshakes and he's like, oh, I could have another one. And then the the guy behind the bar is like, oh, uh, I'll make it for you, but I don't know if you can finish it. And then he's like, actually, never mind, five or six more. Give me so many milkshakes. Give me all the milkshakes. And the guy's like, all right. Yeah, yeah. He drinks like seven of them or something. Yep, yeah, yeah. He has seven ice creams and then starts to feel sick. And th this is where I'm like, in the book, is it alcohol? In the book, does this kid get... Because he's 15 in the book, so maybe. Yeah, at 15, yeah. I, I could see in the book it might be that. But because it is kind of funny how he gets milk drunk. Like, yes, he's 10, so it makes sense, but he's just, like, walk, like he's, like, staggering, ar staggering around. Like, <laughs> Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? You you got to think about, like, seasickness, right? Because they're on the ocean. That's as well what I was... Yeah, no, definitely. I was going to get yeah, to that as well. Yeah, that's, that's what they're trying to say. And uh, I don't know if you can relate, but I can certainly relate to motion sickness. I don't get seasick, but I do have lactose intolerance, so I would probably shit my brains out. <laughs> but... <laughs> Be fine with the with Look, the sea sickness. The gentle swaying of the boat might not help, and I'm just saying, uh, I could relate to him sort of stumbling around feeling sick. Okay, I, yeah, if if he got seasick, yep. and drank like seven milkshakes. That would be a bad combination. I feel like you would sort of stumble around a bit. It's feasible. 
That's all I'm saying. Yeah, so he's trying to hide from the other kids who are following him to see if he gets sick or whatever. And then he falls overboard. Horrified sequence for me watching as a a little 10-year-old. Yeah, I was going to say, the shot where he falls off the ship is like... Is the the same shot from uh, Die Hard, where the bad guy falls off the building? <laughs> it is. It's the same shot, yeah. It, it's like the same sort of shot where you just see this kid fall, and it's like, oh, shit. Yep, that's right. This, ki- this kid's gonna die. And um, I think... I think he did his own stunts, maybe. I, I think he was he, he actually fell into that. Like, it's, you know, kind of dangerous. It's the 30s. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like horrifying, and then you know he's stranded at sea, and then we see Emmanuel come up, and he's like, uh, "I'm an Italian fisherman from Portugal. Uh, I'm a very Italian. Oh, you want to get into my boat? You want to get into the boat? Uh, get a, a little fish, a little fish. Ah, uh, look what I caught! I've caught th- myself a little fish." But he's like, hey, everybody, I caught myself a little fish. Little yep. fish here. Yeah, a little fish with, um, what does he say about the dorsal fin? Like, he's got he's got clothes on his dorsal fin or something. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, he's like, uh, oh, that's a strange fish, you know? So, because it's not profitable at all for them to take him back home, they're like, kid, you're staying with us for three months on this ship. We'll pay you $3 a month. You'll do a little bit of work. You'll learn some things. It'll be great. It'll be fine. And then the kid's like, I'll put you all in jail because that's kidnapping. Fuck you guys, actually. <laughs> well, here's the thing, right? They they fish up this random kid who's obviously fallen off the side. And he goes, hey, my dad's super rich. He'll pay all of you if you get me back to shore. But the problem is, it's a kid. It's a 10-year-old kid. Totally. And that's probably what any 10-year-old kid would say. Plus there's like, 10, 10 plus guys on that ship. Like, that's a lot of people to pay, you know? Absolutely. So the chances that this kid's dad could actually pay him what he's saying is very slim. It's pretty slim. So they're like, we're just going to do our thing. When we go back to port, your dad can pick you up. And he's like, it's kind of shit, actually. I'm going to complain a bunch. And then the captain hits him, which I'm, uh, look, out, out of all the things in this movie that hasn't aged well, um, don't hit kids to teach them a lesson. Don't do that. Yeah. You're driving along and a random kid is on the side of the road and saying that his dad is Donald Trump and if you get him back home, uh, he'll pay you. Um, don't hit that kid, maybe, actually. Yeah. You, you take the kid, you, uh, you, you go get Trump to give you lots of money. Yeah. And then you punch Trump. <laughs> and then you, you punch Trump and write a book about it. But yeah, I, I, that's one moment where I was like, ooh. There were a few moments where I was like, ooh, during the movie. The first moment was when we're introduced to the chef. I was like, ooh, no, ooh, no. Yeah, no, that's not good. Second moment was when the captain hits the kid. And then the third moment was that there, there was a random line where the captain was like, yep, I know my ship like my wife knows my kitchen. <laughs> I was like, don't say that. <laughs> Uh, oh dear. So the, the Manuel, he's told, hey, you gotta take care of the kid. So he's like, I'll break a kid's neck. I'll break the kid's neck. <laughs> okay, that's, that's, that's skipping a few lines here. Okay, I'd like to say that he doesn't, in fact, want to break the kid's neck. Because the whole thing is, right, they, they all talk about this kid and how he's being a snotty little shit. And he won't eat anything because he refuses to work and he refuses to eat. He's so, you know upset that to be here yeah what's his face they're like well if he's not gonna work he's not a sailor and then he's not gonna eat and so what does he do he goes up and like grabs the kid's hands like the kid the kid has like a tantrum and then tries to escape on a boat yeah that was funny so he grabs the kid's hands and forces him to pick up a fish head off the 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 ship yeah and Toss it. Toss it into the ocean. They have a bit of a, a like, a fight. Uh, the kid, like, whacks him with an oar and kicks him in the shins. But then, yeah, he does that. And then he, like, puts him into the kitchen area. And is like, oh, yeah, he can have some food now. The kid's like, oh, he, he said I could have some food. And they're like, oh, really now? Yeah. Emmanuel, could he have some? And he's like, yeah, he did some work. He did some work. And I think in the, the scene where he hits him with the oar... Emmanuel just kind of grabs him, like, while he's, like, having a tantrum so that, like, he can't, like, hit him or anything. He's just kind of 
using up all his energy. And he says the line, I can do this as long as you can. There we go. Marvel stealing lines from yet another movie right there. Oh, true. Captain America over here. Unbelievable. Manuel's the true Captain America. The true Captain Portugal. Captain Portugal. <laughs> Captain Portugal. Sounds rad. And then, yeah, like, he's trying to, like, join in on stuff, the kid. I liked the scene where he goes to, like, join in on the shanties and everyone's like, the fuck are you doing? Yeah. He's, like, he laughs at a joke and Manuel's like, you can't laugh at that. Also, your laugh sounds like a, a bird. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like a seagull, you know. So this kid, he's starting to warm up a bit to the boat. Like, he sees the crew getting along. They're, like, singing and working hard. And he's like, hey, this doesn't look too bad. And then he tries to integrate. And they're like, shut the... Get, what? What? Shut the fuck up, kid. But this whole time, like, Manuel is, like, trying to help him. Like, that scene where he's got the bucket. He's going to throw it overboard. And then, like, Manuel's like, hey, no, wait. Before you do that, maybe spit. And so the kid spits and the spit goes back into his face. And then the kid's like, oh, yeah, actually, thank you. Uh, That's pretty useful. (laughs) Yeah, that was was a good scene. That was a good scene. Because, like, yeah, I wasn't sure what was going to happen there. Yeah. The kid's actually a smart kid. We haven't actually talked about this, but the kid is actually quite intelligent because he's gone to school. He actually is part of his uh, local, uh, like, school newspaper. He's, mm. he's like, writing things up. He's actually quite intelligent. Which, I mean, is probably why he's acting up so much in school, because he's already learned everything and no one else is, like, close to him. So he's like, I'm bored, I'm just going to act up. That's probably what's going on there as well. So so not not only is he the rich, spoiled kid, but he's also quite smart. Yeah. So he doesn't really need to concentrate on work, that sort of thing. So, yeah. The spit flies in his face and he's like, oh shit, if I had thrown it, it would have... And as an audience member, like, I sort of figured that out as he did. And I was like, oh, that's quite clever. Manuel is looking out for him, even though he told him to spit in his own face. <laughs> it was it was helpful. It was still good. It was still good. Um, I also liked, we talked about this with Captain Blood, with the Reverend character, how like sailors and everything back then were quite religious. Um, obviously, they all had their beliefs and they're very superstitious uh, back then as well. I didn't like how they handled it in Captain Blood, but in this one, like, Manuel is always talking about the fisherman heaven and everything, and, and, you know, like, making lines between the saviour, who is Jesus, and, and how he was a fisherman, so it makes sense that his dad, who was a great fisherman who died, would be up there in heaven fishing the fishies, and I was like, you know what? I like this. I actually like this. Yeah, this is well done. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's not a it's not a leap of logic no. because Jesus was a fisherman. That was the whole thing with that was he got local fishermen and yeah, he did in fact uh help one guy like get loads of fucking fish and fill up his entire fucking boat at one stage and he's like, "Hey, Jesus was a pretty good fisherman. <laughs> Probably the best." So- uh, and my dad was a close second. Was a close you know? second, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I like... Which was quite funny. I quite... I mean, personal beliefs aside, I thought it was very good. I thought it was a really good moment. And I think it really adds to the ending of Manuel as well. How... Spoilers, he dies. How, um... How he's like... He's like, well, I guess this is the end. And he's, you know, he like he's fine about it as well. It helps make that decision on his end. Uh, make more sense, I think. So, you know, it was good stuff. And yeah, all sailors back then were re- religious as fuck, so it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, most are very superstitious. It's it's very fair. It makes a lot of sense. When they go fishing, they both go out into a trawler or whatever it's called, and they do some fishing. The fishes, did you like how the fishes looked? I couldn't tell if they were fake or not. I think some of them are real, but also they looked weird. I think I no. I think there was quite a few fake ones. Yeah. But they got a few real ones for like when they did scenes where they were chopping up fish. They actually had a like real fish for that. I think it was a mixture of real fish and fake fish. Well, there were some that they were kind of flopping around, but they they looked like animatronics. But I don't know if they had the yeah. technology for that back then. Oh uh, no, th- it was puppeteering. May or maybe it was p- puppets. Yeah, true. C- could be puppets. Yeah, fair. Yeah, uh, no, I think I, I, um, I was pretty sure when I was watching them, there was, like, a big pile of them. Yeah. And I think for those ones, they definitely, like, they had, like, some attached to sticks that they would wiggle in the, the scene, you know, so make them look like they were moving around and other stuff like that. It was good. It was good. I liked it. I liked it, too. 
Mm. Um, I also liked how all throughout the movie, uh, the captain, Captain Disco, he's got a rivalry with one of the other captains and they're always trying to like mislead each other, but in like a friendly way. That was great. I love that sort of shit in these movies. That's so fun. We meet a few other um, fishermen who, who talk with them about it, but it's just this one sort of rivalry where this ship shows up and it's like, oh, they've been following us to try and get our fish, have they? Yeah. Well, well, we're done with this area. So what we're going to do, we're going to wait for the fog of morning and then we're going to sneak off while they're stuck here fishing these dead waters. And then when they next meet the ship, the ship's like sunk a foot deeper in the water. It's like, oh, it looks like they actually got a lot of fish from that area we left. Oh, maybe they were smarter after all. And he's... They have a whole thing where um, once the ship gets close enough, they start, like, uh, heckling each other. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, which will be important near the end of the movie. Well, I mean, we're pretty much there because they go to, like, the final fishing spot. Well, there's the little competition first. That is a good moment, yes. So uh, what were the what were the two guys that were making the bet? There was, um, uh, it's Manuel, Manuel and Long... Jack. Long Jack, who was John Carradine's character. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to call him Long John again. Um, Long Jack, who makes a bet with Manuel saying, hey, uh, I bet I can catch more fish tomorrow. I'll I'll bet that on that fancy new razor you got. And he's like, yeah, I'll bet, bet my fancy new razor. And the kid's like, oh, are you sure you should bet that? And he's like, oh, I'm not betting on the luck of the sea. I'm betting on myself as a mm, fisherman. Smart, smart. And that's a safe bet. <laughs> but here's the problem. Long Jack goes out with a fishing partner. Manuel always fishes alone. Yeah. So the kid's like, oh, hey, maybe uh, maybe you need some help. Maybe you want some help there, huh? So the kid goes out fishing with them. They're doing pretty well until uh, it becomes obvious that the kid was cheating. Yeah, they even catch uh, the kid catches a massive fish. Uh, yeah, I think it was like a, a halibut or something. It was massive, big one. Yeah, this massive fish, and they're all like, "Yeah, we're gonna win this competition." And then, uh, and then the other guy, Long, he uh, he falls in the water. Yep, and he gets like hooks all in his arm. Like he gets uh, like nasty hooks all cut in their arm. They don't show it on film because obviously it'd be too um, gruesome. But like actual fishing hooks. You can get them hooked in your skin. It's bad. It's really bad. Plus that many all up your arm. Oh. Yeah, it, that's nasty. Very painful. And like fishing hooks, fun fact, are not meant to come out. Yep, that's right. And so it can be really brutal and very dangerous as well. Like the kid could have actually caused like some serious harm to this guy. Oh, the doctor coming up and being like, I can't pull these hooks out. I'll need a cut. And he's like, that's fine. Like, no anesthetic then. Oh, my God. So dangerous. So so very dangerous, that that accident. Yeah, that could have been infected. That could have actually killed this guy. Yeah. Very dangerous stuff. So, of course, the guy's pissed at the kid because the kid admits it. But then, of course, Manuel, you know, stops him from beating up this kid because he's like, if you touch one hair on this fucking kid, or, oh, I'm going to fuck, gonna you, fuck up, you up, kid. But to be fair, like, Long Jack probably could have won against Manuel as well. I, I don't think so. You don't think so? I think Long Jack, I think Long Jack's definitely, you know, he's he's a, a bit of a hothead. Mm. But I think Manuel actually probably a tougher sailor. And then the final action set piece, I guess, of the movie, the only real action set piece of the movie is a race they, um, all of the, the fishing schooners go to a particular spot where everyone wraps up their fishing season and they all throw in their nets and stuff and yet all the fish in this particular area. Um, and, uh, and it looks like, it looks like our boys get a full load first because they're like, well, we've got enough fish to head on back. We've got as much as we can carry. We're the first people to leave. Let's go around and get letters from the other ships to see if they want, you know, us to deliver some letters for them and everything. And they go up to one of them and they're like, yep, here's some letters. But then the last ship they go to to get the uh, the mail to deliver it for them the last one is like, why? Uh, uh, what do you mean? You're going before your your rival. They just came before and grabbed mail from us. Oh no! And it's like, what? And then we see off in the distance, they're they're heading off home. They're heading home. Yeah, they didn't uh, ring a bell or anything to say that they were leaving. They're just trying to leave before uh, anyone notices, you know. And so Captain Disco's like, all right, we're off. 
we're off. It's a race. And we got a race. We got a race sequence. Yeah. And, oh, boy, it's good. The water is rough as well. There's a scene where, like, the whole ship's just on its side against these, like, these rough waves. I don't even know how they filmed, like, the stock footage of the actual ship. I don't know how they got that. That's incredible. They manage to get in front of the other ship, but when they do, there's some issues. Manuel, he's up in the uh, he's up in the crow's nest. Oh yes. And the mast starts to break. All the ropes holding it up starts to break, and then he uh, it just just falls into the ocean. This is this is the moment in the film where I went, ah, oh, fuck! They're gonna do some tear jerking, and I'm gonna fucking fall for it because I like him. I like Manuel. I like his his little uh, hurdy gurdy. You You're know, like, yeah, he's hurdy-gurdy. singing songs. We had such good times where they. He, he talks to the kid about how, like, you know, the best songs are the ones you just kind of make up on the spot, you know? That's right, yeah. And you sing sing and make tunes, but you can make up songs about whatever. And he sings the kid a song specially made for him yeah. about, you know, fish under the deep blue sea, learning in schools about geography. That's right. <laughs> Which I thought was a good line. I wrote that one down. And yeah. So so I'm like, oh, I love this manual guy. I sure hope nothing bad happens. Crash! Mast breaks down. Mast breaks. Baseball goes through my window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, manual's in the water with ropes tied all around him. That's right. And he's going to be sawn in half by these ropes Yeah. if they don't do something. He's like, hey, you kind of can't save me. My bottom half is fucked. The rope is so tight around me. My legs need to be cut off if you save me. Like, it, there's no point. So what they do is, uh, despite the constant crying of Harvey the kid, we haven't even named him. His, his name's Harvey, which is a funny name for a kid. The mask goes to the bottom of the ocean, carrying Manuel with him. And yeah, he uh, he drowns. Uh, pretty bad way to go. Why, one of the worst, probably the worst way to go as a sailor. Yeah. Would, that's, that's, all, that's awful. Yeah, I mean, Emmanuel talks about how it's the way uh, they kind of want to go, but still, not a great way to go, I'd say. No, I think it's how his dad went as well. Well, his dad drowned. Yeah, that's how his dad drowned, and now he talks about it, yeah. So, um, yeah, pretty pretty brutal. Pretty brutal. And then we cut to the end of the movie, they have docked, the ship's docked, they're at port or whatever, and everyone's going on board. Long Jack is uh, real sad about everything and gives the kid the razor, which is nice. Yeah, I thought that was a nice touch, you know? It was a little bit of a thing. It's like this... The sailor who, like, has been mean and, like, angry with a kid because he got a thing. But in the end, like, they, they sort of became a bit chummy, you know? They, he was just part of the crew. And uh, in the end, Long Jack gave him the razor that he won in that bet. And I was like, oh, that's very touching. Oh, uh, no... Ah, I've got to cry again. Ah, oh, it's so sad. Ah, oh. and then the kid goes to the church oh, and he does the thing candles. that Manuel was gonna do because Manuel was the first thing he was gonna do when he got to shore was he's gonna light a candle for his dad's birthday. But of course, he died. So the kid does it instead. And he lights a can ah. a candle for Manuel as well. He he lights three candles. Yeah, and it's like, oh, it's so sad. But then his dad's there, and his dad's like, oh shit, I need, a, I need to be a good as good a dad as Manuel. Yeah, well, Harvey's like, I just want to go. Like, I can I just join the crew? Can I stay with the crew? And the captain's like, uh, no. We we get a massive funeral scene. Uh, where they throw wreaths into the water and stuff in honor of him. It's very sad. But, uh, hey, his dad comes along. Yeah. And he throws some flowers. And it's like, oh, they're going to bond a bit. And then his dad buys him a boat, a small boat. Yeah. They're driving around. They're going to go out fishing and stuff. They're good friends now. Yeah. Uh, we don't see the kid in school. I think he'd be better. We don't know. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see what he would be like in school after this oh, event. Well, maybe we can do a, a quick montage at the start of our movie about it. Mm, I, I don't know if I want that, <laughs> but maybe. <laughs> but yes, that's that's the end of the movie. Yeah, he grows up to be Richard Branson. He starts Virgin Airlines. Uh... Yeah, absolutely. I'll agree to that one. Totally. And that's uh, that's the movie. It's a good one. It is two hours long, but like, yeah, I think out of all the films we've done this year, all the talking films that have been two hours, 
I think out of all of them, this one doesn't feel that long. Yeah. Like, Captain Blood felt a little bit too long at points. Yeah, Captain Blood definitely had some moments that could have been cut. I don't think at any moment I felt this was, like, wasting film time. No. There was no wasted. You even said, like, the start is very quick. Because they want to just get to the bit where he falls off the ship, right? So that whole starting area sort of rushed through that scene and just sort of gives you an idea. Oh, there was one scene at the start with the one kid, the guy's trying to, the kid's trying to bribe. Yeah. And there's like a maid talking to that kid. None of that mattered. No. I mean, I guess it's just to show that these are all really rich kids. Yeah. But even then, that scene could have been cut out and it would have been fine. That scene... But that's like a two minute scene. So about, I would say about two minutes of this film can cut and that's it. Yeah. It's crazy. Like 1937, like 10 years ago, it's 10 years after Metropolis. Like, yeah. Movies, they very quickly like figured out what to do. I'm not saying that like the silent films weren't good because we did a lot of great, amazing I silent am. movies. They all suck. <laughs> it's not it's not true. Metropolis was, was, was fucking yeah, great. Yeah, Metropolis was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but like it's it, it's interesting how quickly movies kind of figured it out and grew and stuff. Like we're really just seeing giant leaps every week in quality and a giant leap backwards with Flash Gordon, but that's because that was a TV show. <laughs> um, so yeah, yep. no, it's good. It's good stuff. I like it. Hey everyone, I'm Kayla. And I'm Audrey. I have never read Lord of the Rings or seen any of the movies. This includes the original trilogy or the Hobbit movies. The only experience I have is reading The Hobbit in the seventh grade. Meanwhile, I've lived and breathed Tolkien for almost 20 years. Books, movies, all the uh, extensive universe stuff, you name it, I've read it. Poorly written fan fiction. Also that, well written fan fiction. Well My own fan, fan fiction. fiction. Your own fan fiction is probably amazing. Join us on our journey to read through the book chapter by chapter in every single episode. Um, you can yell along with me and laugh along with Audrey, um, or you can read it for the first time right along with me. The show is called Mordor She Wrote, and you can find us on Twitter and Instagram. May the stars shine on the end of your road. That's Not Gunner Productions podcast. Well, I guess it's time for us to come up with a sequel. A sequel? A remake? A re-sequel? Uh, I think, I think that, yeah, a, 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 a requel, as it were. Mm, a requel. Because, cause we're, like, we're, we want to remake this for the modern day. You could, do a, you could do a lot nowadays with a modern remake of this film. Are there, are there any sequels to this? Are there any... There are no sequels. There's other versions. There's two TV movies, one from the 70s, one from the 90s. Neither of them are very popular at all. There's a musical. They made a musical in 99, Captain's Courageous the Musical, an off-Broadway production. That, that makes sense. I could see this as a musical. Uh, there's Cabin the Boy, which is apparently based on this. I don't know. But there is also a novel called The Billion Dollar Boy, mm. which is a sci-fi novel, sci-fi Whoa. version of Captain's Courageous. That's pretty cool. I like it. I like that a lot. Oh, this could be great as a sci-fi. I agree. Oh my god, I want to do that for our, our remake. <laughs> I want really? To be... You want to turn this into a sci-fi? I, I kind of do, but like you could you could see this like a um, Treasure Planet situation, right? Oh, yeah. Y you just turn everything just a wider sort of picture sort of thing. Well, it's really easy to do that because it's like, you know, it's the same reason like Star Trek is basically a submarine show. Yeah, exactly. I, I also think A Billion Dollar Boy is a much better name. This this movie could be like a, a thousand dollar boy or something. That That should have been its name, you know? So the plot here is a spoiled rich kid gets high instead of drunk. Ah. He gets high, which I guess confirms that in the novel he gets drunk. Cool. I was correct. Ah, there you go. He falls off a spaceship into a wormhole, Whoa. is picked up by a space mining ship and forced to work with them until the hold is full. 
Yeah, yeah, they go around. I think the ship might be sabotaged or something. At some point, there's a bit more of a bad guy. Yeah, that that, that sounds pretty great. And yeah, now I kind of want to do a sci-fi version. We can turn this into a sci-fi for sure. And uh, what happens is people are going to Mars, right? There's some space station. People are going into space. A lot of flying around lots of things. Yeah. Uh, she can be part of the... First people on Mars, or the first people going to those planets sort of thing. I like the idea of, yeah, like, the kid is on, like, her way to Mars, mm. gets high on the ship, falls off into a wormhole, is transported, like, to, like, a different part of the galaxy where they're, like, mining more. So she is, like, the the daughter of, you know, one of the dignitaries of Mars or whatever, you know? Like... One of the founding fathers of Mars. I like that. I like that. Big important family that owns like a pretty much like half of Mars or something like that. Yeah. The first person who comes to mind is in Stranger Things, Lucas's younger sister, Priya Ferguson from Stranger Things. I think she would, she's like 16, I think pretty good age to kind of play kind of like a sassy rich kid yeah yeah we, we could go like full sassy like attitude rich kid because she's like middle of that uh those teenage years yeah where everyone's like super moody and doesn't give a shit sort of thing do we want to cast her parent oh oh uh diana Greeley. oh god i don't know how to say her name oh diane guerrera from like walking dead and black panther Dinah Guerrero. Yeah, 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 yeah. She would be perfect. She would be perfect. She could do that sort of rich lady, sort of businesswoman mm, sort of thing. Yep. Where she's like constantly on her phone or in business meetings. So she doesn't have much time for her daughter because she's got to, she's, she's literally got to ra- run half of Mars. It's a lot of farming and other things, I think. And I think she's, yeah, like, she's great in The Walking Dead. She's great in Black Panther as, um... Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I think that's a really, 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 really good pick. Uh, okay, so, Harvey, or Harvet? No, no, terrible name. We'll just, like, come up with a new name, whatever, it's fine. No, Harvet. We're going Harvet. It's Harvet, Harvet now. Harvet, right. Um, they go on a holiday to try and be like, oh, uh, I should hang out with my daughter more. Here, we'll go on a business trip to Earth. And then she goes for a space walk, but... Because she's not listening, she doesn't listen to the instructor mm. and all the safety and stuff. Mm. So she doesn't know what to do when things go wrong. And like a stray meteor or something comes in, cuts her rope, and she doesn't know what to do. So she panics, gets sucked into a wormhole. Boom. Other side of the galaxy. Now, is she saved by Pedro Pascal? Is this another movie where it's Pedro Pascal has to take young person through the world, show them, come and evade with Pedro Pascal? Is this another Last of Us Mandalorian? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> Are we doing it? Are we doing the thing, Zach? Are we doing the thing? Okay, I'm not entirely against this idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's another one. He's good in the role of guy who has to take young person on adventure. <laughs> but he's an alien, Pedro Pascal. Oh, you want an alien? Yeah, I want him to have like face tubes or something that he breathes out of, or like you know, he's got he's got like uh, an extra set of arms or something. You know, like it makes more sense if it's an alien, right? If we go alien, Robert Patterson. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I could see that, I could see that. He could definitely be one of the, like, are we doing a mining situation? Is that what we're doing? Oh, <gasps> maybe he's Long Jack. M- maybe Robert Patterson is Long Jack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's Long Jack, absolutely. And we could make him Super Long Jack. Yeah, Super Long he's Jack. Called, he's called Long Jack on the thing because he's like a giant, like, thin man sort of thing. He doesn't really play bad guys either. Like, I don't, I can't think of a movie where he has played a bad guy. So I think um, giving him the opportunity. There was the Twilight series. He was the bad guy in that one. I mean, he sure. was a bad guy. Yeah. True. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, he's one of, he, he'll be an antagonist for a bit, but obviously they'll get along. So one of the subplots of this is she's also racist against aliens, right? Mm, yeah. Because like she that. like picked a fight with the alien. It's like, oh, you're not a human, you're not meant to belong on Mars, you know. I don't care about the intergalactic treaties, you know, that sort of thing. But now she's stuck on this mining colony where with all these aliens, right? 
<gasps> but we could do the time. We could do the time thing. She spends three months on the ship, but because it's in a different part of the galaxy, time moves faster. So when she comes back, it's like only like a week. Absolutely, we can do some timey wimey shenanigans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. What's a fifth role that we can recast? The captain? Yeah, the, you could have like the uh, head of the mining station, you know. Head of the mining station. I mean, I like the idea if it's like Firefly, it's still like a ship with a captain and a crew and everything. Oh, okay, okay. You're saying it's still a ship. Well, it could be a mining ship. A mining ship, yeah. Yeah, that is mining like an asteroid or going between asteroid belts. Mm. But like the asteroid belts orbit the the like giant black hole at the center of this universe. So like there's only a period of time where they can mine these meteors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or this specific type of meteors. So they have to stay here. And yeah, they explain that. And she's like, well, I'm rich. I'll, I could buy all of you. I could buy this ship. I could buy everything, you know, and they're like, sure, kid, whatever. What if it's like, like someone kind of stern, quite a tough shit. What about like Kerry Mulligan, who is uh, Sally Sparrow in the episode Blink of Doctor Who, but she's in movies as well. She is in movies. Yeah. (laughs) She gives off like a captain of a ship kind of vibe. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I could, I could, I could, I could see her, you know, play. Painted up blue, avatar like alien, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in a captain's uniform, yeah. bark and orders. I like that. That'd be pretty good. Who's directing this? That that is the question. That's the last. That's the last real question. Because yeah, yeah I, have a, I have a suggestion. You have a suggestion? I think we should have two directors. Oh, okay. Uh, John Musker and uh, Ron Clements. And Ron Clements, uh, animators. Yep. They, uh, they, uh, most recent movie, I think, uh, Moana. Everyone's seen that one. That's a great movie. Oh, they did The Princess and the Frog. Yeah. That's it's a good film. It's a good film. Classic film. Uh, also they did, uh, Treasure Planet, funnily enough. See, here's the thing though. They're, they're <laughs> animated directors. Yeah, yeah. These are all animated films. But we could make this animated. You know what? We could make this animated. Yeah. Yeah. Never said it wasn't animated. I actually, you know what? We could make this an animated film. I think this would be actually quite a good animated film because then you could have some real aliens, you know, some real freaky alien things. And Long John could... I, I want Long John to be also, like, kind of terrifying. Yeah. All right. We're going animated. I guess it's a Disney movie. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Look, we need someone to f- to fund the movie, you know. True. All right. Is it 3D or 2D? Are we going, like, Moana or are we going Treasure Planet? What's the art style here? I think we go with, uh, like, uh, the more modern one, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like a Zootopia. Yeah, yeah, like a Zootopia. I think that's how we got to spin it to get these directors and Disney on board, you know? We're, this is the this is the next Moana. They made that sci-fi... I haven't seen it. It's like Strange World. That's that Disney sci-fi that came out, like, late last year that no one saw. I think it went straight to Disney Plus, even. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that one. Which is kind of like a sci-fi family gets stuck on a thing. I've been meaning to watch it. But yeah, all right, cool. There we go. That is our remake right there. And indeed, the entire bloody episode, mate. Thank you so much for that. I said mate because it was set in the ship. That's why I said mate. Yar, matey. Thank you for joining us on the high seas. That is the episode, though. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Oldie But A Goodie. We're really, like, working through... It's like the start of May. We're working through this this season. I tell you what, we're really... uh, working through it and i think we're both pretty positive as well like in previous years at this point we will we would have had a ton of shit yes but this year we could just pick the best but so we're getting a lot of goodies we are it's just it's just goodies yeah there's no way that we could pick a bad movie ever we just we just won't and flash gordon was great i've only seen good films this year so it's it's great even that one which was like anti the revolution or whatever. That was the best film. I I love Russian dictators. And that's the episode. Thank you so much for listening. As always, uh, if you like the show, we are on Facebook. We are on Instagram. You can share the love uh, to all your friends on those platforms if you want, I guess. Uh, we are on other stuff like Twitch. No, we're not. I don't stream anymore. And Zach might eventually. When are you going to start streaming? Hurry up and get that. So uh, you do it whatever you want. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Lol. 
what will you stream when you start streaming? What's your games? What are you thinking about? I don't know. I still haven't figured that out yet. You know, I want something popular, but not, you know, Mm. just do the popular things because you're going to be drowned out by all the people doing popular things. So I don't know. Yeah. It's Marvel Snap. I like that game a lot. Marvel Snap, yeah. So, yeah. Amazing. All right. Well, uh, you'll be able to find that at some point on Twitch, probably at some point, maybe. Uh, very non committal there from me. Yep. Um, we're also <laughs> on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash oldie buddy goodie pod. Hey, there's a brand new episode coming out this week on Wednesday, a review of. Evil Dead Rise, mm. uh, the fifth Evil Dead movie. We haven't seen it yet. We're actually off to see it tomorrow. Um, so uh, that episode will be out on Wednesday for you to listen to. And uh, there's heaps of back catalogs there. The Nicolas Cage, Cage Rama 2 coming up, coming up next month. Very excited. Oh, I'm excited for some more Cage Rama. Should be, uh, should be good fun. But before we get to any of that, Zach, you've got to pick next week's movie from 1938. Whoa. So what about uh, room service? Room. Oh, Marx Brothers. First thing that pops out to you. Very nice. Yeah, Marx Brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marx Brothers. I saw that immediately and went, "Ooh, we could do some Marx Brothers." I like the uh, a slight case of murder. I don't. I don't know what this movie's about, but it's. I like the name, a slight case of murder. That's a, that is pretty funny. It's only a little murder. <laughs> it's only a tiny. Mur- is it a comedy? It is a comedy. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, it's a comedy. Um. Ooh, Nancy Drew. There's a Nancy Drew movie. Ooh, yeah, that could work. Absolutely. Don't mind a bit of Nancy Drew. That's pretty cool. You know another famous one? The Baker's Wife. Is that famous? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that one's that one's definitely drama. You've got The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, uh, where a kid says the N-word a lot. Yeah. The one that's just a little bit too realistic. A little bit too, yeah. I, oh man, I love the story of Tom Sawyer, but fuck, that book is fucked. Yes. It's a little, let's say, dated. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know the movie I'm going with. Which movie are you going to go, 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 go with? You uh, you liked Captain Blood, didn't you? I did really enjoy Captain Blood. That was a good fun time. What, what about the what about the lead actor? What did you think of the lead actor? Errol Flynn. I really enjoyed him. I really enjoyed the director. And I really enjoyed the leading lady, too. I thought they were all really good. Wow. Well, isn't that a coincidence, <laughs> Sandro? Because I want to do... The Robin Hood. Oh! The Adventures of Robin Hood, which feature the exact same cast and director. Oh wow. my god, crazy. Same lead, same female lead, same director. Wow! The Adventures of Robin Hood. Oh! The most expensive movie ever made by Warner Brothers at that point, because it was the first film to ever utilize Technicolor. Whoa! Whoa. Wait! We're getting color? We're getting color in 1938? What? Wild. Cinema's gone too far. <laughs> it's gone too, it's true. Next thing you'll know, we'll be putting on glasses and you'll be able to see things in front of your face like it will go out of the screen. Like in a in a third dimension. <laughs> that will never take off. I'm sorry, that doesn't sound like a thing that'll ever take off. <laughs> but they'll try. <laughs> they'll, they'll try why, way too hard. They certainly will. All right, next week, The Adventures of Robin Hood. That's fun. I'm looking forward to that one. That's a good one. That's a good pick. Yeah, yeah, me too. I, I liked the lead actor. I liked the lead female. I liked the director. I'd like another adventure film. This sounds like it's going to be real fun. Yeah, you can't mess up Robin Hood. Wait, that TV show from 2005. Uh, don't talk about it. All right. <laughs> All right. Next week, Robin Hood, you got to get on out of that body. I got to try and find a way to sneak out of this uh, this president. Like he's he's meant to be dead. He's meant to be dead. Yeah, that's that's weird. I'm I'm sure it's fine. I'm yeah. sure nothing bad happened like uh, some evil time traveling protagonist went and saved specific evil people so that he they could join him in his conquest to rule the future yeah that would be far too specific so it's probably not that yeah definitely not that goodness gracious what was that goodness gracious um sign gods what was that? No, oh, nothing. I needed to punch you in the face, and then I got possessed by a strange <laughs> Englishman. It's true, you did. That's right. That, that is what happened. And you know what? It'll happen again. You know why? 
I think you're a piece of shit, sir. I think oh, you're bad. Shit. I think you're a bad bloke, actually. I'm gonna punch you in the. F- I am going to punch you in the face unless you were to s- just so happen to jump through an interdimensional portal just as I swinged at you. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm swinging at I'm you right now. I'm opening up a portal I'm while you're swinging. I'm swinging my I'm arm. I'm opening up a portal I'm, while I'm you're swinging. I'm pulling it back comically far. I'm doing that thing where I pull back and spin my fist around like I'm about to punch you. Hello, governor. Oh my god, the orphan's got a gun! Oh, oh, uh, oh god! Wow. Oh my god, the orphan shot you! Oh. <laughs> That's crazy! This is very uh, unexpected turn of events that I would die right now. The orphan is correcting history? Is that why the orphan's been with me this whole time? Oh god. <laughs> We fixed history. Good work, Orphan. What's going on? Does anybody have any money for bread? Yay! Is this a dark twist? Probably. Anyway, let's go into the portal. Woohoo!